<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Quitting from a job that you already tossed all the desks on your way out. your girl Aisha aka okay, Geek XX Chic and we are back with another reaction to Shogun and we are now into episode three which is called Tomorrow is Tomorrow. So last episode fantastic as they all have been although I have to say episode two so far loved it a little bit more than episode one but mostly because we were getting into the thick of all the plotting. Episode two really focused on the way that Toranaga's mind works. He's in this really horrible position. He's got all these regents that are all after him, all ready to impeach him, and then shortly thereafter take his life and that of his family. He doesn't have a lot of options next to him because he knows a four on one fight is not going to be in his favor. So he has to start thinking quickly of how he can, first of all, delay his impeachment, and second of all, figure out a way to gather forces to be able to stand up against if it turns out to be a four on one or even if it's a two on one, whatever the situation is, he knows he needs to get himself into a better position. So last episode was about a lot of him putting pieces in play to make sure that the other regents are fighting amongst themselves, which works perfectly, but also learning a bit more about what's going on with these foreigners, with the Portuguese that are there in Japan already, as well as John Black's, uh, what's, his, what's his Blackthorn? Along with John who washed up on his shores. But John turned out to be a really valuable resource because he let Toranaga know about Macau, the fact that the Portuguese have set up a base there that they could effectively mobilize very quickly to start a war with Japan if that's what they needed to do. He also learned about the fact that the Portuguese and the Spanish have basically decided that Japan is theirs for the taking as far as trade and plunder, and also the fact that the Portuguese do have a longstanding plan to eventually overtake Japan because they're not Christian or anyone who's not Christian will be supplanted by them. So this was a huge wake up call for Toranaga. I think he already knew that the Portuguese were probably up to something, but I don't think he understood the magnitude of it or the fact that they had already set up a base so close to Japan that could put an, a plan like this into motion. So it turns out that he is very astute, as I said. Uh, I love seeing that he's very much about learning and getting as much information as he can. Like I'm sure he's got his own mindsets towards the Europeans, but he's recognizing that they are, or at least John is someone that he can learn a lot from and that he should use that knowledge to his advantage. And then as far as John, he went through a bit of trials last episode, but he eventually ended up back with Toranaga and he's starting to finally understand that the only way he's gonna survive in this world is he's gonna have to learn more about it and actually make an effort to integrate himself into it rather than coming in with that Euro mindset that he had, which was kind of like, they're just gonna respect me because I'm from Europe, right? So I'm glad that he's starting to take the pride, or not the pride, take the ego down a little bit and actually try to learn a bit more. And we see that he and Mariko are kind of, I'll say vibing mildly right now. I think that's who he's going to learn the most from since they can communicate with each other directly. So we ended the episode with an assassination attempt on John's life, which was sent through by one, I can't remember the name of him, but one of the regents who is really tight with the Catholic church. So now Toronaga is very aware of how this game's gonna go. And I think he's gonna be working a lot harder to keep Blackthorn safe. So we're gonna see where we're gonna go from here because that was a pretty ballsy move and word's gonna get out pretty quickly. So I'm ready to jump into this episode, but just before I do, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified when I upload more of these episodes for this show or anything, else that you might be watching of mine, go ahead, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you will be in the know. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate it so much if you showed some love with some likes and please keep those comments coming. You guys have been absolutely wonderful. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. I think that's kanji and I think it's really cool. I really want to learn how to read it. Okay, that poor squire. I think he's still probably a bit scarred by what happened with that courtesan. Of course. Who didn't? Amida. Okay, so that was the girl who showed up. standing right behind him. He's like, I dare you. Say some. Say some. Has he? Oh, he's got a 
Oh, I love it. Play with him. Mm -hmm. He sees everything. Oh, look at the honesty when you're about to die. Liar. Hmm. <laughs> you think? I thought so. キリンの身を守るため、アジロンに歩く、そなたの漁村に連れ帰ってもらいたい。さすれば。オッケー。トラガ様はこちらに留まって何をなさるのね。そのイヤビジネス。エグザクトリー。あ、ごめんなさい。
I cannot believe that man went in the blanket with his hat and veil. I'm sick. I'm sick. Let's hope they don't do another inspection before they leave. Mm, he's like, what side are you on exactly? I thought you were on ours. I didn't realize she'd gotten out, but that makes sense. I gotta give it up. The pregnant lady did a good job. As a hostage, you learned one truth. The enemies are everywhere and friends nowhere. To show your true heart is to risk your life. What Sad you lesson. Saw? He'll die, clearly. He be killed. <laughs> and all of us. Mm hmm So keep your lips zipped. Damn, Shido knows your tricks. Who's going to stop him? Can somebody else fake a pregnancy? Tearing into ladies' private quarters? It's not proper! <laughs> okay, John, I'm starting to like you. <laughs> Am I the only man present who treasures the purity of a woman? <laughs> oh, get them British theatrics going. A blight on us all! My God, the shame of it! <laughs> He's like, what the hell is going on back there? <laughs> Not you insulting him, buffoonery. <laughs> Listen, one thing I will say about John, the man has stated several times he's not dying here. <laughs> okay, he's like, if I gotta put on the drama, I'm putting on the drama. Because I like my neck where it is. Don't look for a smile, stop it. I mean, he kind of saved your asses right there, truthfully, as well as his own, but he needed to stall. They gave a distraction. You think that, you know, my man Toronaga would at least shave the, the beard or something, so if they looked, he could have at least tried to turn his head away and look feminine, but. I was about to say, why are they going so slow? But then I forgot the palanquins are carried by people. Is it true what you said about the purity of women in your country? <laughs> it definitely comes and goes. Nice, no. Exactly. We think allowing is necessary to good health. And it is. But, you know, maybe not selling people into it. Clouds in the rain. It means... Thank you, I understand. The oh, good. <laughs> She's like, if I had to explain that to you, sir, fully grown man. <laughs> I'm assuming that man's your husband. Unfortunately. A strong and admired warrior. Exactly. I'll say what I must in mixed company. My boy Tudor. And my daughter Elizabeth. And... I did not expect that. <laughs> Arrows! Y'all supposed to say, is that not an arrow? Is it Hiro sama? No. No. I it's the Catholics so. again. <laughs> yeah, he's like, Dad? <laughs> Damn, that guy's got a good arm. He doesn't care. He does not care. Exactly. I think he made that pretty clear. These regions don't like each other. We have to help them. My girl. Yes. Yes. She said we fight in Japan. Oh yeah, you got shamed, huh? <laughs> Johnny said if she's fighting, I gotta get out. <laughs> Ooh, yes, girl. Let them know, Mariko. No. Don't trust you. Don't trust you at all. Rico! Is that her husband? That's Mariko's husband, right? It's starting a whole forest fire for what? I'm nervous. I'm tense. I don't like it. It's too dark. It's too quiet. Something's gonna happen. Can y'all keep your heads down? I know more arrows are coming to come from somewhere. I just feel it. Can y'all roll faster? Oh, yeah, well, we all knew he was gonna die, I think. My girl Mariko needs to be set free. I mean, we really do respect the uh, the valiant effort, truly. And I feel sad. Well, actually, yeah, I guess I feel sad for the boy, but I don't think the boy likes him much either. Good to go back. No, I'm sorry, we can't. My man knew that this was a risk he was taking. Exactly. And she's like, I'm not really going to be running after him like that. <laughs> He's loyal, at least. 
But he's a shit husband. He's gonna do a seppuku, isn't he? Bow, right? Yeah. Peace out! But Mariko's about to cheat anyway, so at least this way you'll be gone. Oh, okay, he's gonna die in battle. Okay, that's a little bit better, I think. I could, are we just gonna watch him die? Damn. Like, I'm not a fan of the man, but okay, good. We don't have to see it. Now you all making me feel bad for this man. I guess you get to tell your son that your, his dad died a hero. Worst case scenario, though, is that they don't kill him and they keep him and torture him. Blockade. Damn. Nope, they don't fish at night. Not with arrows, anyways. They can't sink her. I mean, it sucks, but I guess you're gonna have to do a little trade Z, right? I let you come back to Japan next time you're coming in. And you blow these guys out of the water. The only thing is with uh, John on board, that's gonna be dangerous. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm still alive. <laughs> how's your leg? Hi, how's your mother? Oh. Damn. He requests an escort through the harbor. I let your stupid asses back in. They were gonna leave anyway. No, you need to let them back in. Toranaga offers you ten thousand silver coins to invest. You would retain half the profit. Yes. Hmm. Pirate to pirate. It's giving us a church in Edo. He'll burn it down, but for now, sure. Okay. Well, game of chess. <laughs> Cut this man's head off. What? That English pilot, he stays behind. Another someone of Tokoro, the Hairi Konda. That's the manifest. We will be able to hold him to that promise of the church. Even after he is dead. You think so? You must stay. He had to know there was no other way if he went to that ship. But you're crafty, John. Toronaga has faith in you. You can swim though, John. Honestly, I just jump overboard, bro. By the time they caught on, you could be on another ship. Sound the drums. Look at him taking orders. Okay. But then again, he saved their lives, so. Mm hmm. Toronaga's like, I knew you had something on your sleeve, sir. I see that fire in your eyes. <laughs> it's like, I get what you're saying. Pronunciation a little off. That would be me. At least he's learning. You black eyed son of a shit fester to his mom. Whoa, you two like each other? Do you want a room? I live in this or son of a bitch. Right? With pleasure, Captain. He's not gonna do it. <laughs> He's like, ah, I need someone to tw trade insults with. But really, can we leave mothers out of this, please? They only had the misfortune of pushing your big headed bodies into this world. Yes, he is. And that's why Toranaga's using him. He needs someone just as insane as he is. Can't pull off a coup like this with someone who's sane. Yeah, I know y'all little uh, think your little boats stage. are gonna make it through that giant ship. Maybe the small one, but they're gonna plow through you. Yeah, I hope y'all can swim. That was dumb. My sincerest gratitude. My sincerest fuck yourself. <laughs> it's like, can y'all please stop trading insults and pay attention? Is that a rock bank? Let's see. Are you a pilot or aren't you? He said, gain momentum. We got to do our best. I'm assuming it's low tide. I don't know enough about the water to know when high tide or low tide is. Oh, he's trying to push him into the bank. Okay. You don't have to do it, Rodriguez. You don't have to do it. And admit it, you respect this. The old living past would make up your fucking mind. <laughs> Come on, Rodriguez, you know you don't want to. You respect it. Thank <laughs> Rodriguez. You did owe him, though, because he did save your life. He threw you that oar. You're giving him the edge. Uh, uh, you already had it. Good answer. Prove me other one. Prove me wrong. Yes! Yes! Well done, you 
They're like, are we in trouble? What's going on? We're not used to praise. That's your death rate, babe. That's what I thought, yeah. You. you owed him your life. So at least you gave him one shot. Oh, you think? Go home. Take a bath. Relax. See, this part of sailing I'd be a part of. I think this nice calm water thing would be nice, but your girl gets seasick. It's just not worth it. それがしの侮辱と受け止めます。夕べのことでお怒りならばごもっと。ねえ。バイ。この番地は本に乗っ取られ。あ、the <laughs> <laughs> Quitting from a job that you already tossed all the desks on your way out. <laughs> okay, yeah, do what you need to do, bro. Whatever makes you feel like you're still in power. Hmm. Oh, my man can read. And now there's only... Oh, awkward. Unless you appoint someone new. They're like, damn, he knows math. <laughs> oh, Toranaga, you sexy beast. Choke. And exactly. Hmm, it's not about you, sweetie. Ah, this is harsh. Toranaga's coming from a very different place. Clearly his son was not traded around enemies his whole childhood, so... Good morning. She's like, so now that I'm a widow, how are you? <laughs> Soon it will be winter. It is a very difficult season in Japan. He's from England. It'll be... Exactly! <laughs> It'll be a breeze. Still. Sir, don't be eyeing me so much. My husband's barely cold. Asked about my daughter. Mm -hmm. The truth is, I've never met her. I left England before she was born. Mm. You serve your lords honorably. Does he have lords? I have no lords. Ah, I was thinking he did this for himself, for greed. Well, not greed. I guess he thought he was trying to provide for his family. This is what beckoned me. Mm. Freedom. More than the horizon. Oh, poetical. You better... Fair wind. Or spout them verses, John? I'm sorry about your husband. <laughs> She's not. <clears throat> My lord says this was a gift from the priest. He's like, shall we have this talk now? Mm. Which means death. Mm. My lord says he will have to have them translated. Mm. And that slowly like they take a long time. So you'll live in the meantime. Mm. Fair trade. Can you read between the lines, John? Tell him it would be a great honor. And even if you don't know it all, you'll learn on the way. Learn on the fly. The return of my men and my ship. Can't blame him for asking. My vassal? Okay. You've earned the respect. You've come up a rank. Yes? Hatamoto. Hatamoto. Yes, face! Take it, he's got a Japanese name now. Which is a very great honor. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, just thank you. Arigato. Oh. He's learning. Huh? He's quick. Oh. Okay. We're friends now. Wait, is he naked? My lord would like you to teach him how to dive. While extending your hands to break the water. Yeah, demonstrate. He says again. Does he actually need this lesson or is he just trying to see what you're up to? As many times as he tells you to, quite frankly. Until he is satisfied. Exactly. <laughs> She's like, come on, dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> I like when the ladies are like, ooh, look away. Or maybe not. My lord would like to race you to the shore. But I warn you not to let him win. 
Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> Let's go. Even though he wore you down with all them dives. I see you. I see you. My lord learned. Look at that. Okay, Mariko's smiling. She ain't grieving her man none at all. She said who? Husband where? <laughs> Was I married? Who said that? Who said that? <laughs> okay, guys, that was episode three. Loved it. Loved it. That was great. I am loving Toradaga more and more and more every episode. The way this man's mind works, it is so hot. I love a smart person. I love a smart person. All right, uh, lots went down in this episode, but the highlights were, of course, Toranaga needed to get out of Osaka. Now that the wife of the heir is back in Osaka, he knew it was only a matter of time before someone was gonna take his life. Either it was through the impeachment or another assassination attempt. But the assassination attempt was definitely his wake up call. Like he already kind of knew something was happening, but if they send more of those assassins, I mean, my guy's good, but he's not invincible, so. He came up with a very good plan, a very interesting plan of playing a little Uno Reverso in those palanquins. Thank goodness he's also able to fit in them tiny things to get himself out of Osaka. It wasn't a completely foolproof plan. It was definitely a bit of a Hail Mary, but he had some like, I really like the idea of how he had the whole switch out situation, but Ishido apparently has known this man long enough to know that there could have been something up with this sudden departure, the sudden sending of all these people out of the city, including this foreigner who has caused all this contention amongst his regents, right? Because Ashido had everybody lined up, right? He thought everything was good. Could not have possibly anticipated that this little British man showing up all smelly on his boat was going to be able to throw so many monkey wrenches into his plans. And so anyways, we see that uh, there's thanks to, well, actually once, once uh, John was a made aware of the stakes that if they were caught with this little ruse, which he caught, obviously, like I said, the timing, even the pregnant woman being in on it, doing the fake labor pains, I was like, sis, it's serious. But listen, that's one thing. Toronaga seems to get people very loyal to him for the most part. Like I think the people who are closest to him really respect him and really are loyal. We're gonna talk about Yishige, Yashige, I think his name is, um, the, the double agent in a moment. But anyway, <clears throat> we see that once John realized that if this ruse does not work, they're all gonna die on the spot. He was like, we gotta figure out a way to stop this secondary inspection and make sure that we don't get caught here. So I thought the theatrics that John did was actually funny, but I will give this to John. Now that he's dropped the ego by a lot, he's definitely becoming smarter and he's figuring out how to navigate a lot better. And so I like that he used his foreigner. <laughs> I'm gonna show you what a properly incensed proper British gentleman would do in this situation by blustering and making lots of noise, which in Japanese culture, very out of place. So of course it caused enough of a distraction to keep everybody from going too far further with the inspection because they definitely would have been caught if that was the case. And uh, we saw that they, they got to, actually before we talk about that, let's talk about Yashige because that happened before they left. So Toranaga brings Yashige in and he says, look, whatever happened to us last night, somebody knew where we're gonna be staying. Like something, something don't smell right. It's feeling a bit like you brought the engine here because you knew that there would be an ambush. You needed to give someone a location of where he would be so that they could do that ambush and take him out. Like it just feels, feels like maybe you might've betrayed me, maybe. So of course Yashige kind of knew something was probably going down. We saw that he was literally writing his will in the beginning because he was like, damn, that did not go the way it was planned. They're gonna figure out the only way that they could have known where the engine was, was because of me. So we see there that he thinks he's gonna get killed, which he deserved tr truthfully, because he did betray his Lord. But instead, Toranaga says, look, what did he ask for? What did Ishiga, I know it was Ishida, what did he promise you that would have you turning your back on me? So he says that he just wants to get a bigger fife. Basically, he wants to get a certain province or whatever, and he wants his fife to be bigger. That's all that was promised, and that's why he did it. Like also, I guess he was also promised a seat on the council, which he says he has no interest in, to which I do believe. It looks like from what we see of Yashige, Yashige, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, my apologies, I'm getting his name wrong. But I get the sense he's more about the money, right? He he wants the money, he wants the land, he wants the riches, he wants the soft life. I don't really think he wants the political power side of it at all. So anyway, we see that instead of executing him, we uh, Toranaga says to him, I will give you that, I will give that to you if you stay loyal to me and you protect that and you help me to protect what I have, that's my that's my condition. And we can see that the guy in the back, um, Mariko's father-in-law is kind of like, you can tell he's not happy about that. But as I said in the episode, Toranaga is smart enough to realize that at this point, um, taking out people that could be potential allies is a mistake. 
And I, let's keep things straight. Like he kind of, he made sure in that meeting to let him know. He's like, I know that Ashida went to your residence. I was watching. I've got people everywhere. So just know that even if you do plan, try to plot on me going forward, I'm going to know about it before you do, <laughs> right? <laughs> He kind of let him know, like, this is your last chance. Even though this one is definitely not the most trustworthy, clearly Yashige, um, Yashige is a talented swordsman. He's got balls. We got to give him that. And he has resources of some kind. So the point is, he's useful. If I don't think if Tornaga didn't see any value in him, he probably would have just had him executed. But he needs people right now. So plus, he also needs somebody who has an idea of what might be going on on Ashita's side too, which clearly Yashige has. So anyway... Good to know about that deal. And then we see that later on, Ashida's man was kind of talking to Yashige, like, are you supposed to be with him? Like, why are you going back with him if you're on our side? And then of course, Yashige had to say, oh, you know, I'm playing my part and I keep my promises. So we'll of course have to keep our eye on him. But like I said, I can't really blame Yashige because this is a big political struggle and my guy's just really trying to save his own ass. I don't blame him for not necessarily wanting to go down with the ship, right? He's not that loyal. He's definitely more loyal to himself than others. But I think that's one thing about, again, about Toranaga that I love is that I think he really does understand the nature of people and he recognizes that Yashige is loyalty is to, or to himself and wherever he thinks it's gonna benefit him most. And I think he's okay with that, at least for now. So anyway, we see that unfortunately they did not have the planned exit that they wanted. We see that the other guy, I wish I knew the name of the guy, but the other Christian guy brought his forces, attempted once again to take out the engine. And then when they find out that, that uh, Toranaga is part of this party, they're like, oh crap, well that wasn't part of it. And this gets sticky, right? Because the Lords are supposed to do these things the proper way, right? Because that's the whole reason with this farce with the impeachment. They have to do things in the eyes of the public in the right way so people will respect them when they take over in Ashida's, or sorry, in Tornaga's absence. So you can see that this guy's kind of torn because he's like, if he continues the attack to try to get rid of John, he risks taking out Tornaga, which would be a real monkey wrench in their plan. But in the end, he's like, you know what, screw it. Like Tornaga shouldn't have been down there anyways. Also, he found out that Ashita's men is with them. So he's like, same thing. He's like, they're casualties, right? At this point, we'll deal with the consequences. But anyways, thankfully, we have a lot of really good fighters on Tornaga's team, including my girl Mariko. She said, listen, I'm not gonna stand back like no damsel. She grabbed her a weapon and she got to work. And we see that John got highly embarrassed in that moment and said, mm -mm, I can't have the women going out and fighting, so let me go. So he got out there and did the best that he can, even though I don't think swordsmanship is necessarily his forte, but he held his own, so I'm gonna give him those props. And they do manage to get to the harbor, and fortunately, they run into the same crew that John came down to eat, oh, sorry, to Osaka with. So they all owe John their lives, really. So I think he even grabbed one of those guys from nearly falling over. So they've got a little bit of, if not loyalty, a liking for him. And they see that the black ship is ready to leave. Another side note, we find out that the captain of the black ship, which I was trying to remember who he was last episode. He's a Canadian actor. He's been in a ton of stuff. That's where I recognize him from. But anyway, he's basically like, I'm not waiting for permission. We've got cargo. I don't want to lose my money. I'm leaving. And the problem with that is not so much him leaving. They explain, or the, the Portuguese are trying to explain to him that if he leaves without permission, then he will not be able to come back. So it's going to be a one-way thing for profits. To which he basically says at this point, I don't care. Like, I just want my money. I'll leave. We'll deal with the consequences later. So anyway, we see that um, they're trying to leave the harbor. And it's not long before John, thankfully, again, saves them by recognizing that they've got men in the water, planning to board the ship and basically take them out in the water if that's what it takes. So, you know, whoever the other Lord was, he planned. He was definitely trying to make sure this whole engine problem got dealt with immediately. But it turned out the fact that this captain wanted to leave without permission was their saving grace because their boat was much bigger than the Japanese boat, obviously. And it's also, I think, probably armed if it needs to be. I'm pretty sure that those trading ships did have ways of defending themselves if necessary. Basically, John tells them, we're not going to get through this on this little boat. We're going to have to go over to the black ship or get the black ship to make way for us. Or we're going to end up being in this harbor all night or until they come and get us. They don't like it, but Toronaga realizes that John's got a point, goes over there. And of course, this means that Toronaga has to make yet another deal. He ends up saying the black ship can leave, even though the black ship was leaving anyway. But basically he has to convince the captain to help him because at this point the captain was gonna leave regardless. So he basically said that he's gonna send money down for investments in Macau going forward and that the captain can keep half the profits of whatever he makes out of his investments. And so that works. And then he also, for the priest side of things, he's like, if you guys can get those priests to come to me rather than backing the other two, I will let you build a church in Edo. And so 
The priest, unfortunately, we see that uh, Toranaga did not have either of his translators there, so he couldn't really hear what the, the priests were saying. But we hear that the priest basically says, "I'm not. we're not going to guarantee him anything, but we'll say we'll talk to him. Like, just say yes for now, because they're thinking they're going to take him out regardless. And he's like, we got permission, so we're going to put up our church in Edo regardless, because it looks like up until this point, Toranaga has kept them out. And we already know Toranaga's not really a fan of the Catholics. He's just like tolerating them. So that's what ends up happening. They get out, except for John stays on the boat. The deal is that they're supposed to leave John behind because of course, that's the whole reason for this mess in the first place. John basically recognizes that if he stays behind, there's that's it for him, right? They're gonna execute him as soon. They probably won't even, <laughs> they probably weren't even gonna let him get back to shore before they took him out. So John, again, he has shown many, many times that he's got a really strong spirit and he's got a determination to survive no matter what. So instead he says, no, to, especially because the crew that were still on that boat, a lot of them probably would have ended up being casualties as well. So he says, no, nah, we're going to go. We're going to row. We're going to keep right in step with this black ship. They're going to cut a path. We're going to go right in their wake. And that's exactly what he does. The pilot of the black ship is Rodriguez and they're trading insults. I really like the dynamic between John and Rodriguez, to be honest. I like Rodriguez's character. He's hilarious. They have their little exchanges and we see that the pilot, the pilot of the black ship is telling not the pilot, sorry, the captain of the black ship tells Rodriguez that he's supposed to basically run their ship into the rocks. And Rodriguez thinks about it, but we see, and he could have done it, but he owes John his life. He knows that, that he would have died out there if it wasn't for John. So he owes him a debt, a life debt, and he basically pays it by not doing what the captain asked. Anyway, all that happens. And when they get back on the ship, we see that Toranaga has decided that they need to start getting ready for war. And he says that he's gonna let Yeshige train the people up in his lands and train up the people in his fife to start fighting. And we see that his son has a real issue with this, right? Cause he knows that Yeshige has already shown that he's not hundred percent loyal. And he's like, dad, why don't you trust me to, you know, let me train the army and like, let's get rid of Yashige. Let's not trust him. And his dad basically is like, because so what? Like, who cares if Yashige is not 100% loyal? And the son's kind of like, do you not like trust me? Is that what it is? You don't trust me. And, and dad just basically says to him, like, you don't understand anything. He's like, you're playing a game of friends and enemies when, when you realize, or when you don't realize that it's only you and yourself, right? And we saw in the beginning of the episode that Mariko told John that Toranaga should trust nobody. He, learned, he does not trust anybody. And that's kind of how he's gotten to where he is right now. And a lot of this, I think, has to do with his upbringing, right? She brings up the fact that he was sold, sold or traded, traded when he was six years old to one of his father's rivals. And we heard him give that story uh, back in episode one, I think it was, to the heir saying that since he was six, he was traded from, you know, what they call him, Busho, Busho to Busho to Busho. And he said it was an honor because he learned a lot during that. And I think that's where he learned about things like why it's important to have a spy network. We see he's got amazing negotiation skills. The fact that he has always got his eye on people, which is why these people were not able to creep up on him with this whole impeachment, right? So he learned a lot of valuable lessons from that upbringing. But when you think about it, it's very sad. It's very heartbreaking, like to grow up without the love of your parents and to have people who didn't really have any affection for him, not really, and probably used him and hurt him. It probably wasn't a, a pleasant childhood, let's put it that way. It did equip him to be extremely astute, but what was the price? The price is that he trusts no one, not even his own son. And him basically telling his son that that's the way he's supposed to live when his son clearly didn't have that upbringing is a bit like, sir, <laughs> you can't expect your son to understand anything about that. He grew up with you, clearly. He knows that he can trust you. He feels that he can trust you. He clearly loves and connects with you. The fact that you have obviously put up your own walls for your own reasons is completely beyond him. But anyway, it just kind of shows us more into Toranaga and how he's become this man that he is, the way he's had to cobble his life together through that hardship that he grew up with. And again, it's saving him by and large right now, but it is a very lonely place. It's, you know, to not trust anyone in this life is not a happy place to be. So nice little lesson about Toranaga and that relationship between him and his son, his son who seems very, when you look at the two of them, you can see how different they are too, right? Toranaga is just so austere and his son, you can tell, is just still so hopeful. <laughs> So hopeful and fresh to the world. I have no idea how old he is. I get the sense he's maybe in his early 20s at most, but anyhow. Anyways, we have the battle plans there. And then we see the Toranaga again shows his genius by saying to John, I need you to train my men 
on all the like tactics of war because we know that these Christians are gonna be coming for us that are on the island at least. And if they bring in more people, we need to be ready for them. So we need you to tell us about the things they might do and train us up and you know help us get less ignorant so that we've got an advantage. And we see that he's kind of like, uh, I'm not really a I'm not really like a soldier, right? He's like, I'm not a I'm not really battle trained. But then I think he just thinks better of it and thinks, you know, instead of me looking this gift horse in the mouth, maybe I should just take this opportunity to be useful. <laughs> Right? So, I mean, I figure even if he doesn't have a lot of battle experience, he can learn. And again, it, it doesn't have, even have to be fighting because I feel like when it comes to hand to hand, the Japanese are still going to be way better than most Europeans at that point. That's not the issue. But if John can tell them about the types of guns that are out there, like the way they work, those are the kind of things he might be able to tell them if he, in case he, or maybe he knows more than we, than we do. We don't know. But either way, he now has this assignment. And then we hear... Toronaga again say that he has the journals that, that came from his ship. Of course, they outline the things that the Spanish and the Portuguese have been up to, but it also talks about the fact that they've gone to several Portu or, yeah, Portuguese bases and ransacked them. Like that's what Rodriguez was talking about back in episode two. So it, those would be considered pirate type actions. And that's why he basically told John, like, I was told these journals are gonna tell me you're a pirate, which means by our laws, you have to die. And, but we know that Toronaga does not want to get rid of John, at least not yet. So he gives the excuse of, yeah, it's gonna take a while to translate these accurately. So I guess I better give you something to do in the meantime. But I really like that about Toronaga. Like he's really, as I said, he's not really concerned that much about the character of a man. He's not that concerned about whether or not you're deeply loyal to him. And especially when he basically tells John, hey, I want you to train my men and give them knowledge. And John comes back with a counter offer of, hey, I'll do it, but I'd like my ship and my men back. That's, I think, when Toronaga was convinced at that point he could work with John because I think in his world, Toronaga feels like everything's transactional. Everybody wants something. And if he's much happier knowing what you want and seeing if it's something he can provide versus you being like, no, 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 I'm just blindly loyal. Because people like that, you never really know their true intention. And it's been brought out several times in this show that people's true hearts have to stay hidden. She shows you how Tornaga's mind works. And again, that's exactly the mindset I think he needs to be successful in this upcoming battle that he's going to have to wage. And so, yeah, we have a really cool moment afterwards with him and John swimming, which I think is interesting. I think he really does see John. And again, that's another thing too. He says, John will no, no longer be referred to as the barbarian. He's been given a name. I'm assuming Hatamoto means something. I don't speak Japanese, so I'm not sure what that means, but apparently it's a title and not just a name. So we see that Yashige did not like that. He looks really surprised that uh, he was given that name, but it is what it is. Now everybody else has to respect him. And what I like is that it came after John. John had to change. If you look at John of episode one, and now he's a very different man. The ego is in check. He now recognizes he's gonna have to play by Japanese rules while he's in Japan. And he has now earned the respect of the people. And I think he's gonna continue to earn the respect of people around him if he continues to be this way, learning, being respectful of the language, but also showing that he's got that bravery and respect for himself and the, the ability to stand up for what he cares about. So. Yeah, really like that. I really like that dynamic and how it's building. John is much more likable this episode than he was in episode one for me, for sure. Outside of that, Mariko is now a widow. I was wondering how this whole thing between her and John was gonna end up happening with her being all married, because back then, you know, women were not allowed to cheat like that. <laughs> Cheating overall was looked down upon in Asian culture in general back then, but women got much more severe punishments than men did when it came to that sort of thing. So she definitely couldn't have risked that and, you know, risked her life quite literally, especially considering that her husband was not, you could see he was deep in the misogyny. So that would not have gone well. But anyways, um, he's out of the picture. So there we go. <laughs> that takes care of it, I think. We did not see him die though. And so in true TV slash movie fashion, if you don't see it happen on screen, there's a chance he's still alive. And I said it in the episode, it's possible that he hasn't been taken out, that maybe they're gonna keep him and possibly try to use him as a weak spot for Toronaga later, because they know that Toronaga doesn't necessarily have love for him, but Toronaga loves Mariko, clearly. He's got a really special place in his heart for her. And also Mariko's husband's dad is one of Toronaga's right-hand men. So you get my point. There is value to keeping him alive. And so I, since we didn't see him go down, I guess my point is he may very well still be alive. We needed to clear a path for Mariko and John to embark and 
even though we found out that John is also married, I'm assuming he's married because back in those days, a lot of times people weren't going around having whole families with people they're not married to. We found out John is married and he had two, he has two kids. And I'm wondering how did he, oh, I guess he must've gotten a letter. Cause I'm like, how did he know he had a son if he wasn't there when he was born? <laughs> but anyway, he's got two kids, a daughter and a son. And he said that he's not seen them now in almost two years. And I guess that's one of the main reasons he does not want to die in Japan outside of just not wanting to die is that he has a hope of getting back to them. But he has a really interesting conversation about how he chose to go on this trip. I mean, obviously he wants to get money, right? That was one of the big things. But he talks about how being out on the ocean just is something that calls to him. He loves everything about being out in the open sea. Considering that era that you were living in, even in England as a white man, he would have done, you know, his life would have been generally okay but the class system was very highly in effect back then. And if you were not part of the upper, upper class, if you were not super rich, if you not, didn't have good connections, life wasn't easy out there. It was definitely very limited and you felt that box very strongly. And I think that's what John was talking about, leaving, being out there, being on the open seas, possibly getting his opportunity of becoming rich and upping his class and his standard of life on the ocean, that was way more options for him, way more opportunity than he would have had if he'd stayed in England. So I, yeah, we got more insight into what drives John anyways. And he got very poetical when he started talking about the ocean and stuff. So I get it. Like he really, that really is his passion. And so we see that Mariko definitely got a little soft for him in that moment. You know, I think she really understood the desire for freedom, especially considering her lot in life being in Japan. So anyways, definitely building the foundations for those two to get together. Now that John, again, he's still married, but it's been two years. He, it's probably gonna be a lot longer before he'll be able to leave. So yeah, they're definitely opening the way for the two of them to end up in a lot more than just a working relationship. Let's put it that way. We're gonna have to see how it goes down. I think things are gonna start ramping up. And clearly the people back in Osaka know now that things are about to get spicy because we ended the episode with them having their little council meeting and <laughs> Toronaga serving his resignation. <laughs> from the Regency. I'm sorry, it's just, it's so petty. I can't, I love it. The fact that this man's like, by the way, I quit. I escaped, I ran away. Most of your men are dead. I made a whole mess of your city. By the way, I quit. <laughs> like, you're quitting a job they're about to fire you from. I love it, I'm sorry. It just, it just made me laugh. But anyways, it wasn't just to, to be petty. We found out that the way that their laws work, the only way they can actually have an impeachment or do any deci decisions like that, you need five regent members. That is the way their regency has been set up by the last leader. And now that one has resigned, they are one regent short. Therefore, they cannot move forward. And basically he's left them in a stalemate again, as far as being able to impeach him. So uh, they're fighting in between each other. We see that that was happening even before the resignation came in. The regents are no longer on the same page. Ashida has essentially lost his grip on the council. So yeah, the, the odds are definitely better, in better favor now for Toronaga. They're still not good, but at least it's not this united front of, of four against him anymore. It's getting juicy, guys. We're starting to set up for the good stuff. And I think now in the upcoming episodes, we're gonna see a lot more action and more plotting, and I'm ready for it. Another great episode. Hope you guys enjoyed watching with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.